is up the particles. We'll go from 200 to 2,000. What I want to do is have it look smooth. And uh, maybe we'll do <coughs> 5,000. I don't know what your systems can handle. I have like a mega bastard beast over here, so mine can handle quite a bit. Turn it up to 10. All right, so it's looking smooth now. We'll put a delete in there. Not all, we'll do by particle age. 50 by 50. So we won't get too much of a fall off. Okay, good. Check the speed. Also, it's really important that if you have a slower computer or you just want to maybe uh, optimize what you're looking at, you can lower the viewpoint count. All right, look. So you can, uh, you can keep the same amount of particles for the rendering, but it doesn't show up on the viewport like that. It helps sometimes. I like to keep mine at 100% so I know what it is that I'm looking at. Again, if you lower it, it optimizes it for your computer to handle. I'm going to keep mine at 100%. Now, there's a couple of things you could do here, depending on what you want your final outcome to be, but it's really just nitpicking. Like, uh, right now the particles are emanating from the surface of the geosphere. We could have it do it from the pivot point, which would be dead center, and it leaves more of a pole, a straight line. Uh, that won't, I don't know. I mean, you could do that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to keep it on surface because we kept our sphere small enough where we could actually do something like that. If Now, if we made our geosphere like 10, you might want to get some, it might start breaking up there on you. I mean, we'll test out a few ways, but I'm just going to keep it right now at 1, and we'll keep it like that. So now that we have everything all set as far as that goes, we'll bring back up our afterburn panel, which is a, a keyboard shortcut eight. And here we have our listing of things. Uh, what we wanna do is under the afterburn manager, the source particles, you want to grab that particle flow that we just put in. You can either click on this button to add it and then grab it out of the scene, or you can click on this button and grab it out of the list. And again, we didn't name things, did we? Right-click it, rename PFS particle flow source, right? Rocket smoke. And we'll call this E01 emit. Again, if I misspell something, I'm sorry. Don't get on me about it, please. I'm not good with grammar, proper punctuation, things like that. I just do what I do. Now, I know you're out there watching because I'm getting your comments. And I appreciate even the negative ones. So now we have that renamed. You'll see it automatically updates in here. PFS Rocket Smoke. Okay, we can click on this right here. It gives you a preview of what the little balls will be like. 
again, this might eat you up. <laughs> if, uh, you know, you don't have a good computer. Fifty twenty five. So we get an idea of what size we're working with there. Rocket smoke never comes out even like that, does it? I guess at this speed, too, we could actually even lower the particle count. Let's make it 5,000. Right. I'm just going to skip a whole bunch of crap here. We'll, do, we'll deal with what we're dealing with here. So here under particle shape animation parameters, we have the size of the spheres. You want to right-click this AFC. Enable, and we want to adjust the size of it now. We can go from this case, we'll do three. And what happens is over time, that's what this AFC is. And see the PA right here? It stands for particle age. We can set up a velocity or distance, whatever we want. We're going to keep it at particle age. Particle age, we'll keep it three, and then we'll jump all the way to 30, which means... From the second it emits, the frame it emits, it'll start out at sphere radius 3. And when it dies, it will be at sphere radius 30. We can add a variation to that. It automatically gives you 10% variation. We're going to jack it up to 100. And it goes beyond 100 even. It goes to a number I'm not even sure, maybe 999, I don't know. But we're going to keep it at 100 for right now. And what I would do here is you keep in mind the sphere radius of 3 to 30 on the death. Noise size. Enable that one. 3, again, 3. And you don't want to make it as big on the death. You want to make, make it uh, 27, let's say. And now we can do a quick render to see what it is that we're looking at. That's a... Uh, Okay, you see here we got the trail a little bit. We're going to go ahead and turn off the, the sphere size preview. Set this all the way to the last frame. And we will look at this again. All right. Now, also, what we'll do is the density, that is how opaque an object is. Okay, so density, and we'll change the end to zero because we want it completely invisible when it gets to the death. And it starts out at about three density. That's good. Default is all right here. Render it out again, see what we get. See, that's not nearly ready, is it? No, it isn't. So what we want to do is you click on the little blue thing here. See how it clicked right on the line and created a, a point. Now right-click that, Bezier, so we can get a little bit of a, a curve in there as we move it. And we will render it again. See what happens is uh, three right here. This represents the death cycle, the birth and death. Birth all the way to the left, death all the way to the right. And the uh, 